in Python, we have two types of loops. So unlike some languages that have four or five different kinds of loops, here we only have two types. We have for loops and while loops. Their syntax is very simple and clean. Let me show you. So we start with the for loops. With for loops, we can iterate over any object that is iterable. Here are a few examples. We can iterate over strings. So for x in Python, because strings in Python are iterable, which means we can iterate over them. So in each iteration, our loop variable x will hold one character. Let me show you. So we terminate this line with a colon, just like our if clauses. Now we use indentation to specify the block of statements. So we simply print x. Run the program. This is what we get. Here's another example. We can loop over lists. So let's say we have a list of names, a, b, and c, colon, print x. There you go. So we get a, b, c here. Now, what if you want to loop over a sequence of numbers? That's when we use the built-in range function. Let me show you. So for x in, we call the range function pass a number like five, Look at what happens. Now, to keep this example clear, I'm going to comment out these few lines. So the shortcut on Mac is command and slash. On Windows, it's control slash. Now, let's run this program. So when we call range of 5, we get numbers 0 to 4. We can pass a starting number like 2 to 5. Let's run this one more time. So now we get two, three, four. We can also pass a third argument here called step. Let me show you. So I'm going to change this to zero to 10. Let's say we want to display all the even numbers between zero to 10. So we pass two here. That is our step. Now, when we run the program, we get zero, two, four, and so on. Now, one thing you need to understand about this range function is that it does not return a list. Let me show you. So I'm going to comment out these two lines as well. Let's just print range of five. What do we see? We see range of zero to five. We don't see a list object. In contrast, if we had a list like one, two, three, four, five, see, this is how we see a list printed in the terminal. So what is returned from the range function is not a list. It's a different kind of object. It's a range object. Let me show you. So here, I'm going to call the built-in type function. Now, let's look at the type of this object. It's an instance of a class called range. So our range function returns a range object. Range objects in Python are iterable, like strings and lists. So we can use them in for loops. Now, what is interesting about these range objects is that they take a very small amount of memory. So here, if we pass, let's say, 5 billion, we are not going to get a list of 5 billion elements. We have a small object that can be iterated over. In each iteration, it will produce a new number, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. In contrast, if we had a list of 5 billion items, that list would take significant amount of memory. So this is the difference between list and range objects.